Hello and welcome back to Power Electronics. We continue our series in modeling photovoltaic systems and in this video we're going to look at creating a simple equivalent circuit model to model a photovoltaic panel. We'll use data from a photovoltaic panel data sheet to help create the circuit model. Remember if you like this channel please subscribe and also if you like this video hit the like button down below. I want to do a quick shout out to Dr. Arno Smets from Delft University of Technology. If you haven't already, please check out his free edX course and I'll provide the link in the description below. It covers all aspects of photovoltaic systems, including the semiconductor physics for the photovoltaic effect. Here's an overview for this video. First, we are going to review the Shockley diode equation. Then we'll look at a simplified equivalent circuit model for a photovoltaic cell. We'll look at the key terms found on a data sheet and we'll use those to model a photovoltaic panel and we'll provide an example of the calculations for, for modeling that panel. Finally, we'll show that we'll probably need a more accurate model to incorporate parasitic losses, specifically if we plan to operate at what's called the maximum power point on the panel. Let's quickly review the Shockley diode equation. The Shockley diode equation relates the, the current through the diode, I sub D, to the voltage across the diode, V sub D. And here on our diode, we show the anode up on the top and our cathode on the bottom. The current through the diode, I sub D, is equal to the reverse saturation current, I sub zero, times the quantity E raised to the power, VD, which is the voltage across the diode, divided by N, the ideality factor, and for a polycrystalline device, we will assume N is equal to 1.3. For a monocrystalline device, we will assume that N is equal to 1.2. VT is the thermal temperature, and it varies with the temperature of the photovoltaic cell or the PN junction itself. And for 25 degrees centigrade uh, temperature of the cell, our thermal voltage is equal to about 26 millivolts and all that subtracted uh, from one. A couple of things to note. First of all, if the voltage across the diode is zero, if VD is equal to zero, then we have I sub zero times E raised to the zero minus one, and E raised to the zero is equal to one. So it's uh, the current through the diode when the voltage across the diode is zero. The other thing to note is we can solve for the reverse saturation current I sub zero, and I sub zero is equal to the current through the diode divided by E raised to the voltage across the diode, V sub D times N V T uh, minus one. We'll use this equation later in the video to estimate the reverse saturation current I sub zero. Here is our simplified equivalent circuit for our photovoltaic cell. And this is just for a, a, a single cell. First, we have the irradiance of the sunlight, G, which is a parameter. G has the units of watts per meter squared. We model the cell as a constant current source, I sub pH, and actually that is a dependent current source, and that current source is dependent upon the magnitude of G. And I pH is linearly or modeled linearly dependent on G. Uh, so I'm going to put K as a, a constant coefficient in there. Uh, K would have the units of amperes per watt per meter squared. And what this equation implies that if I double the irradiance or double the, the, the value of, of G, I will double the photovoltaic current that our constant current source provides. Also in the model, we'll notice because the photovoltaic cell consists of an n-type semiconductor material with a p-type semiconductor material, we have an, a, a p-n diode uh, modeled right here across our terminals, and uh, here's the output of our photocell. Pretty much most of the current will flow through the load. However, as the, as the voltage starts to increase or uh, the current starts to increase, this diode effect is actually going to limit the output voltage across our terminals of our photovoltaic cell. 
We're going to use the data sheet to find two parameters for our equivalent circuit model. One parameter is IPH, the value of our constant current source. The other parameter is I sub zero associated with our diode. We find IPH, the photovoltaic current, using the short circuit current on the data sheet. Notice that if we short circuit the terminals, the voltage across our diode is equal to zero, and therefore, at that point, ID will equal zero, and all the current will flow through the short circuit. Therefore, IPH is equal to the short circuit current that we'll find on, a, on the data sheet. The other parameter that we can obtain from the data sheet information is I sub zero, the reverse saturation current. Typically, the open circuit voltage per cell is not provided on the data sheet. However, the open circuit and the number of cells are, therefore, we can find the open circuit per cell as the open circuit for the panel divided by the number of cells in the panel. Because it's an open circuit, all of our photovoltaic current will flow through the diode. Therefore, I diode is equal to IPH, which is also equal to I0 times E raised to the VD, which is our open circuit per cell, NVT minus one. Note from the short circuit data, IPH is equal to our short circuit current. Therefore, we can solve for our reverse saturation current, I sub zero, it's equal to our short circuit current through the cell divided by E raised to the open circuit cell, which we find from this equation, which is the open circuit for the panel divided by the number of cells in the panel, all divided by our, our, our ideality factor, uh, N, times Vt, our thermal voltage, minus 1. Now we have all the information to create the simplified equivalent circuit. Here are the key terms we're going to have to look for on the data sheet. Typically, we're going to find information under, provided under standard test conditions, STC, standard test conditions. That is consists of our irradiance, which is typically at 1,000 watts per meter squared. And when they're doing standard testing conditions, they'll keep the temperature of the panel consistent at 25 degrees centigrade. And on the data sheet, you'll find a number of data points. First, you'll find the maximum power point, which consists of the maximum power current and the maximum power voltage. For photovoltaic cells and photovoltaic panels, we really want to be operating at the maximum power point with our power electronics. We'll also find on the data sheet the short circuit current. We'll find the open circuit voltage for the panel. Again, always at standard test conditions. We're going to typically have to calculate the open circuit for each cell based on the number of cells that, may, that is given in the data sheet. So these are the parameters we're going to have to find and we'll have to calculate that one. Let's do a quick example. Here's a Kurosera panel. Um, it is a, two, a 270 watt, almost 300 watt panel. It has a maximum power point with 31 volts and uh, 8.71 amps um, and here is our standard test condition information. So right here, we automatically can solve for our photovoltaic current, IPH, and it is equal to 9.43. If we want, we can scale it by including a term G divided by 1,000 watts per meter squared. So say, for example, our irradiance on the panel is not 1,000 watts per meter squared, it is 800, then we can incorporate that and scale appropriately because it is a near linear mapping from the irradiance to the photovoltaic current. We can also solve for our reverse saturation current 
using the open circuit for the panel of 38.3 volts. Note that our panel consists of 60 cells, so our open circuit per cell is equal to 38.3 volts divided by 60 cells. And that is equal to 6.83 volts per cell. So we have all the data we need. We have our photovoltaic current and we have our voltage per cell. Let's go create our equivalent circuit model. First, we'll calculate our reverse saturation current and it is equal to the short circuit current, recall, divided by E raised to our open circuit per cell times NVT. And here I'm going to use an ideality factor. This photovoltaic panel is a polycrystalline device uh, of 1.3. And we're going to use our temperature of, of 25 degrees centigrade. And we'll have to convert that to Kelvin. And we obtain a thermal voltage of about 26 millivolts. Minus 1. And uh, when we put all this together, we see for G equal to 1,000 uh, watts per meter squared, our, ID, our, our reverse saturation current I sub zero is equal to 4.76 times 10 to the minus eighth, and it has the units of amperes, 4.76 times 10 to the minus eight. So now that we know I sub zero, We can, we, can, we can build a diode in, in uh, multi-SIM or LT-SPICE using this reverse saturation current. Um, we, we know our photovoltaic constant current source. It is equal to 9.43 amps times G all divided by 1,000 watts per meter squared. So again, uh, if G is cut in half to say 500 watts per meter squared, our photovoltaic current will, will follow in a linear fashion. Our final step is to model the photovoltaic panel. Earlier in the video, I provided a, an equivalent circuit for a single cell. We're going to use that equivalent circuit, and if we wire those in series, we could create our panel um, but it's a little bit easier to note that if I have multiple constant current sources wired in series, it's equivalent to having a single constant current source of that value with the stipulation that they all have the same value of, say, 9.43 amps. However, the voltage is going to change, and it's going to change and be proportional to the number of cells. So we can create now and I'm going to use a dependent current source. And it's going to be dependent. And I'm going to model uh, this as our irradiance. And I'll call it G. And this will have the term of G divided by 1,000 times 9.43. And now I'm going to put a, a, a dependent voltage source up here. And this will be NC minus 1 times the voltage across our diode. So there's the voltage across our diode. And there is our equivalent circuit for our panel. Couple other things to notice. Um, photovoltaic cells are also temperature dependent. I have not incorporated this into the model. It has a positive temperature coefficient or a PTC for current. However, that is very minimal compared to the negative uh, temperature coefficient for the voltages. 
So I used the Kyocera model and used the information that we just calculated to uh, plot the IV of the panel for our simplified model. And there's one important thing to notice. From the data sheet, we have a maximum power point of 8.71 amps at 31.1 volts. So let's go up about 31.1 volts and 8.7. And that's right about there. One of the things you'll notice is our model, our simplified model is overestimating the maximum power point because the maximum power point based on our model should be out here. And we have overestimated that maximum power point. And that is because we have not incorporated any losses into this model. And we'll show how to incorporate the losses so we can get a more accurate model around this operating point in a future video. However, to get us into the ballpark, this is a really good model for your first approximation at looking at designs for your power electronics. All right, let's wrap up with the key points for this video. First, photovoltaic cells and panels behave like a constant current source with a parallel diode. I think that's the number one takeaway. Uh, number two, that magnitude of that current source is proportional to the irradiance of the sunlight. Number two takeaway. We find the, the parameters of that parallel diode using the Shockley diode equation, and we estimate I sub zero using information found on the data sheet. And the data sheet contains information at standard test conditions, and oftentimes it'll contain uh, data at other testing conditions as well. And our short circuit current at standard test condition is a great estimate for a photovoltaic current. And we can scale our photovoltaic current by the irradiance G uh, to account for uh, different uh, types of irradiance. We're going to need to know the number of cells and that from that we compute the open circuit voltage per cell and we use that to find our reverse saturation current. And also on the data sheet is the maximum power point. And that leads into our last key point here. Our simplified model does not account for losses in our photovoltaic cells. And we can model these losses and we'll show this in, a, in a, another video using parallel and series resistance to model those parasitic losses. So that's it for modeling uh, with a simple equivalent circuit, a photovoltaic panel using information off the data sheets. Thanks for watching.